During my travels down rivers around the world, I've encountered countless people who work tirelessly to keep rivers alive. Taylor Hawes with the Nature Conservancy in the headwaters of the Colorado is just such a person. So the Colorado River is, is a river that has carved the geography of this entire region. It's written past 200 years of, of history from the settler's perspective and thousands of years of history from the Native American perspective. Um, where does this water come from? Each river has its own cycle, its own rhythm. And the Colorado's rhythm is one of snowfall in the mountains that then runs off in the spring. Our system has adapted around snow and the fish spawn based on those big spring floods and, they, and the people have built reservoirs. We actually store four times the river's natural annual flow because we've realized that the river isn't always, it's not always rushing when we need it to be and the water's not there when we need it to be. So we have to capture those spring flows. What about hydroelectric power and, and using the Colorado River for the generation of hydroelectric power? Hydropower is a, a tricky topic because it's one of those questions or one of those issues that it is worth it because it, it is clean energy and it's uh, using nature to provide energy and I think we want to foster that belief that nature has something to add. The first thing that has to happen is we need to recognize that the environment's a legitimate need and that having a healthy river is an important legacy to leave to the next generation, just as having a good drinking water supply and food security is important. So we need to put it on that same equal footing that we have those other uses and carve out that water for that use. So it, it seems like we need to become much more adaptable with all of these changing circumstances. How can that play itself out? We're going to have to do a better job of looking at the needs of the communities that depend on this river, as well as the science that we know about rivers and what they need to be healthy, and look at them together, not just in isolation. Right now, we kind of, we like to fragment. Uh, every water user likes to look at just their system. They don't want to understand how their system impacts the river or how their system impacts their neighbors. How should people understand water so that they can change how they perceive it and how they use it and how they behave with it. The biggest thing people can do is to reconnect with the river and understand that natural rhythm that it has, that it needs that natural rhythm, and, and spend more time uh, understanding how the river works. But also people need to understand in the West where their water comes from. You might live in Denver and never know that your water is coming from the Blue River over on the western slope of Colorado. And it might be your favorite fishing stream. And so understanding that it's all the same water and that there's only so much to go around the one problem that people have, I think, with conservation is they feel like, well, if I conserve water in my home, it's just gonna go to build another subdivision down the road. So I think there's a question about growth too, and what is the carrying capacity of this land and this landscape and this river? And we're gonna have to wrestle with that as, as a community. As we've explored these issues with Taylor and others, I've been struck by one simple fact. Our survival in the American West and around the world depends on reconnecting with the limits of our rivers. Until we do so, we will continue to be blind to the risks that threaten our way of life.